to reach the best views in the Blue Mountains, you need to squeeze between trees. We're in a really tight section here. I'm either going to hit some trees or take out a stump. Clamber over rocks. You gave those hitches a massive workout. Survive the mud and pass under the gazing eyes of the elders past. Nanangua. Local indigenous leaders give us exclusive access. Listening to Auntie Sharon tell us the story it was like I'd never been here before. Oh, right. Take us on private tracks. Get us down the locals only road. What we call Gurawamurawai, meaning Goanna track. And tell us the hidden secrets of the land and its people. We come close to the top and we sort of were running out of power. We're on a testing journey of discovery that starts right here. Last week on Your 4x4, we started our adventure exploring the Blue Mountains in Oberon. These blokes are on drugs. And travelled through the Janolan State Forest for some scenic views. And saw the sacred hand cave paintings at Mayangu Marigu. I'm a little bit overwhelmed coming into here. It, it's a place of spirituality, it's very emotional. It's not just the cliff face, it's just a very special place. You can really feel it, the presence as you walk into here. It's a place that we've got to respect, but it's also a place we should come and learn about the culture, the history, the heritage of all Australians. This is a magic spot, and this here is what inspired me to come back and do this trip. Beautiful, beautiful place. Maingu, Maragu. There are many, many places like this that you should learn about. When we leave the place, we leave only a footprint. And then I thank the ancestors by closing the gateway. Manangua. Once the gate was closed, Sharon was eager to share something deeply significant to her and her family. This is totems related to Wiradjuri people and individual Wiradjuri people. So everybody's got their own totem and connection to country through storylines and things like that. And then mine happens to be through the creation story for the billard run. And the creation story for the billard run starts with a duck and her name's Gaga and a water rat named Bigoon. So the Bigoon and Gaga are how the platypus, the billard run happens. In my family group, I look after macropods, so kangaroos and things like that. So you don't eat your meat group, but culturally you're obligated to look after all those things. So it was really nice doing platypus work the last few nights. Beautiful. Anyone want to have a feel? Try it on, if you like. I've been here a few times before mm -hmm. and I've seen those paintings and I've yep. done that cave walk mm -hmm. and going today and listening to Auntie Sharon tell us the story, mm -hmm. it was like the first time I've been here. It was like I'd never been here before. Oh, it was just so different. It's amazing. Obviously coming off the tour with Sharon, this area up in here you'll also see in a different way is also a very, very special area. We were promised some dramatic scenery among the Blue Mountains and it's, it's a true pleasure to finally be amongst it. It's almost like being in a church, isn't it? It's so It really gives you that feeling that you're amongst something bigger than just us. In school we're taught here's how you can see how the rocks have eroded, but here you, you got proof that 13,000 years ago someone's put a handprint here. We reconvened at the cars, we then drove up but it was amazing because as we drove further up this valley the rocks came in and in and in and to a point where you could almost touch both of them and it was a spectacular scenery and really enjoyed that. From there we've headed up the hill and up onto the top of the mountain range. Prior to reaching our objective a few hurdles need to be overcome. There's nothing wrong with having a bit of fun along the way. Yeehaw! All right, we're in a really tight section here. I'm either going to hit some trees or take out a stump. Can we back up a little bit, please? 
We go for about 10 meters in and already I'm jumping out of the car to go up and help spot him around a few trees because he's already gotten stuck in the big Iveco. You want to talk about tight, twisty trees in the way, stumps in the way. It was quite the adventure. The guys with the caravans had to do a few three-point turns. Thankfully, Charlie was in front of me and I would just wait around the radio. I'm waiting for Charlie. <laughs> and he was brilliant. He was so helpful. Yep, now you make that. Ah, oh, you're a legend. <laughs> Slowly and carefully, but we got there, we got there. As we sort of left these wonderful rock formations, we headed along a little bit more and then started a bit of a descent. And we came into some very interesting track condition. Bit of a drop here. Bit of a change in weather, we've got some rain coming and we're making our way out to a, evidently a pretty spectacular outlook. Coming through this track, it was definitely tight, it was twisty, and then we got to this spot. Yeah, that's a drop. A reflection test here. Trying to juggle the car from side to side, trying to do the ruts, but trying to keep control of the car and the van at the same time. Without hitting any trees. <laughs> My cruiser was going this way and the caravan was pointing the other direction. So doing this sort of stuff is fun, but it's a little bit different when you've got a caravan on the back. The problem with the trailers is they're high and they tip like that. We're going down these dirt tracks and then the dirt disappears and it's this rock face. New South Wales has some of the best rocky trails in the country. This one is definitely not the toughest, but there's enough challenge to keep us on our toes. Once again, there's nothing the trusty Prado cannot do. We don't have a caravan, so lucky during the day, not so lucky at night. Low range, it's like super slow-mo. Got to hold your tongue in the right spot. You might just make it through. Thanks for that, guys, appreciate it. Had to take it really slowly, but gee, it was fun. There's a few steps and things to negotiate, so it will help to have a little bit of a lift in your four-wheel drive. See the vans twisting, undulating. It gave those hitches a massive workout. These tracks are tight and overgrown. It's hard enough in a four-wheel drive, yet alone towing. Fortunately, Charlie heads back to lend a hand. You've got about four inches, that's it. No, stop. <laughs> you are so good. <laughs> yeah, we didn't really notice it too much going down just because you're distracted by the scenery. It was a little bit tight. It was a bit more challenging than we expected. We're not tying a caravan, so it was a little bit lucky for us. With Piranha's Ford Ranger making it through, our attention turns to the ARB 300 series. The 300 is a bit wider than the Ranger. Poke down carefully, not to damage anything. Oh, easy. Nick's about to go through with the EC. The track was really tight and rocky, and it was very hard to actually navigate through. You had to pretty well pick your lines to make sure your camper or your trailer ended up where you wanted it to be. Well done, Nick. That was good. We've had many years of four-wheel drive experience trying to read the track. Little <laughs> times we had to kind of stop and reverse and navigate a little bit more to the left and more to the right. But on the whole, though, we got through. We got through. On tight tracks like this, you can never underestimate the value of a good set of towing mirrors. This is a Clearview Next Gen mirror, and it's extendable. And when you're not towing, you have it in this position. And then when you are towing, you adjust it depending on what you need. It can pop right out like this, so you can still see around your caravan. 
This is a safety factor. It's convenient, it makes traveling safer, and ensures that you can see exactly what's behind you. For all of your touring and towing needs, check out trekhardware.com.au. During the middle of the day, a little sprinkle of rain, but didn't dampen the spirits. We ended up getting out to a lookout which overlooked the Walden Valley, and we had lunch out there. Great spot, beautiful views. It's really important landscape to take care of. And it's nice for people to come and venture out and have a look at these places, but we do say come with respect. Because if you show that respect, the landscape will show you things that are very special and unique. What a view to take in. It was absolutely spectacular. I've never felt so wild and free looking out over this huge cliff face. certainly special. It just didn't seem real that we were up so high. So beautiful. Honey was standing out on a ledge getting a photo taken. It wasn't my kind of thing, I was standing back a bit, but you can stand there and watch that view all day. Make the trek, it's worth it, that view at the end of that track. Gorgeous. One of the best parts is you can see these little houses dotted down the bottom and you think, how do these guys didn't even get there? It was literally straight down. Anyway, that's another story. After a couple hours of darting backwards and forwards, it was definitely time for a hard-earned thirst. We were the first one to drive our car down and set up for lunch. The scenery was breathtaking. I thought I'd just sit up top on the car and take in what many don't actually often get to see at all in their lifetimes. The view was magnificent. Exactly what you'd expect in the Blue Mountains. If you're loving this content as much as we love Make It, make sure you follow our page. Time to turn around. Some of the turns were a little bit more tricky with the uh, caravans. There wasn't quite the approach as you had coming in. So we had to get a bit of creative to get out of there, no problem at all. You know what you've gone through going down, you've now got to come back up, so the challenge becomes twice as hard. Thankfully on the way back out, I had Steve in front of me. I could see his line that he was taking, had to take it really slowly, but gee, it was fun. A few little pinch points going back down was equally as impressive because you kind of in from a different angle and you get to appreciate it. Cars with no trailers didn't have any problems. For those with a van, a little bit of maneuvering. Driving down, gravity's on your side. Driving up, you've got to try and keep that motor going at the right pace. So you don't spin wheels and bounce around. It wasn't overly challenging as such, or it wasn't dangerous, but it kept you on your toes. These tracks are pretty tight. I'm turning left. We've got a tree right up against the caravan. Any further than that caravan is going to hit the tree. So what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to winch, using my rear winch, the caravan sideways over to the right, which will help us get around this corner, no problems at all. We had a tree exactly where I wanted it. It's all about setting your pulley up in the right position to make sure we maintain that angle to pull it exactly sideways. Now you've got to be careful when you're doing these lateral winches. You really don't want to be loading up the bearings on these trailers too hard. I know that the MDC caravans have got heavy duty bearings in them. That's one good factor. But also know that the terrain we're on, this nice soft limey sand is going to slide nice and easily sideways with the tyre. So as you can see, we've now got a stack more room between the tree and the caravan. We should be clear to drive through. And once we're through, we'll then clear this chicken track, which will make life easier for everybody else. The section here that I've cleared, I'll be driving straight through there to make the life easier so I'm not disrupting anything else. We cleared a bit of a track there, which was an old track as well, so other vans and other cars could actually go through without damaging their vehicles. It was a bit more challenging than we expected. The track was really tight, it was very hard to actually navigate through, but we did end up getting there in the end. Mm -hmm. 
as we make our way out of the Gardens of Stone National Park, with the beauty of the rocks being hit by the afternoon sun, it's hard to fathom that we've still only just scratched the surface of this beautiful area. It's like a land lost in time. We jump back on the blacktop, spend about five minutes heading to the next destination. But due to some recent storms, both last year and this year, the road's been blocked. This is where the guys are now blasting out the rock so they can dig further into mountain to remake the road. It's awesome, you can see why it's called the Blue Mountains because you can see the blue haze coming all the way back. A bit of a silver lining to a dead end. We're looking at this beautiful view, wondering how do you get down into the valley. Lucky we had Sharon here because she was able to get us permission from the council to go down a locals only road. What we call Gurrawal Mooraway, meaning Goanna Track. I had a checkpoint system for when you were heading down into the valley or out of the valley and every time you got to one of those checkpoints you had to notify and let other people know that you were coming down or coming back out because there were switchbacks and tight spots where vehicles couldn't pass each other. LB checkpoint one inbound. Checkpoint two. On checkpoint three. I had the clinometer going in the Prado and I had a big 30 degrees as we came down which is absolutely unheard of and it was constant too. It was literally straight down and yes my face is on video on the GoPro so you guys are probably going to see that. <laughs> I think we'll go home. <laughs> 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 what they've had to do to the concrete up there just to make it drivable. They had cuts in it, they had so much rock through it just to give it enough grip so people could get in and out comfortably. And not only is it an engineering feat, but the history of it is fantastic. So it's the road that the traditional owners used to use. It's been cut out over hundreds of years. So get to drive it in a modern car was really special. Get down the bottom. There's only one thing we have to do, go back up now. Do the Yui, come back around, radio ahead saying we've got nine vehicles outbound this time, and then we're in for the big drive. That Fort 9 Plus, it's light as. If Simon was prepared to skip leg day, he could pull that out by the chains and skip the gym. We come close to the top and we sort of were running out of power, hoping our Mr. Coolman over behind us there was going to give me a little bit of a nudge. Let us know when you need a push back. We're getting close, mate. I was getting a little bit worried for him, but it was literally head back for me, and you're just in for the ride in that trusty Prado. Got to use all our gear, really get the full experience here out on the Blue Mountains. Oh, yeah. It's been a great day, a long day, a happy day with the best bunch of people you could hope to travel with. I'm going to throw a rock on your head when you're in that Yeah, spot. if I wasn't looking, like you might massive guy. Like. <laughs> How's that tent going, Tristan? As I have my swag set up, he decides to come through and absolutely <laughs> belt it with his foot. Why do you have to be who you are? <laughs> Set your tent up way <laughs> over there. I right, guess what I'm gonna do your tent as soon as I see it standing up, buddy. I'm putting 50 shades of my foot through that. Thanks to my Coolman and MDC, I'm cooking up gourmet sausages for the crew, so let's see how they go. It's time we've got our second pan onto the MDC kitchen and started toasting nicely butter flavored wraps. And who doesn't like melted cheese with their gourmet sausage? Gherkins, some ricotta cheese, some cherry tomatoes. <laughs> that is awesome. Definitely time to crack open a cold one. We've found our camp spot for the night and I'm definitely keen to sit around the fire and have a good laugh. He's gonna feed me a marshmallow or five. So cute. They have no idea what's in store for them next week. The crew will be tested to their limits in the pursuit of the best view in the Blue Mountains. Next week on your 4x4. Ready for an epic action shot. Hi, I'm Steve Zammett and I'm a recovering Sydney suburbanite. 
Whoop, whoop. Day two. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't. Bitch, bitch. bitch. <laughs> the worst human being to ever walk this earth is you. Someone needs to do some growing up. We, we won't, we won't <laughs> say <laughs> that. <laughs> There's two types of waste. There's human waste. That's another video. Disgusting. My anger marigou. Yeah, my anger marigou. My anger marigou. My ego marigou. My ingu. Where am I reading? Third line. Mango. Mango.